Welcome to Quantum Revenue Expansion, where we keep you motivated, inspired, and thinking big. Up-leveling into quantum revenue is a choice that we can all make in any moment and then continue to make that choice to stay in that space each day. On this podcast, Ursula will share revenue growth strategies to reach your next level and introduce you to CEOs just like you who are making it happen. What's your next quantum leap going to be? See it, own it, and take that first step. If this is you, then Ursula wants to invite you to join us at the next 2X Intensive now. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. You're listening to Quantum Revenue Expansion with your host, Ursula Menchez. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Quantum Revenue Expansion, the podcast. So excited because I got my bestie back with me today, my twin, Janice Graham. If you don't know it yet, we are twins. We have proof. We have photos. And she's back. And she's going to be talking about her new book, her business, how she's helping her clients today with the topic of the pinnacle of success is a good exit strategy. Think about that for a moment. You're going to want to grab a pen, your favorite tea or coffee or whatever it is, depending on what time of day where you are that you want to drink right now. And you're going to love Janice. If you haven't met Janice yet, you know, definitely go back and listen to the shows. Janice and I have covered everything on this podcast from friendship. We've been friends since 2004, count those years. We did an amazing show about the topic of racism and just how to have that conversation. And that'd be a good one to, I don't know, I got to like bring that one back because it was right after George Floyd's passing and everything that was happening in Minnesota at the time and in the world. And it was just a good time for us to have that conversation because Janice and I've had that conversation behind closed doors for years. So we took that conversation in the podcast. So definitely go back and take a listen to that one. We've talked about business growth and now we're going to talk about death. (laughs) I had to say that (laughs) Janice in the insurance world. And I, we're going to, no, that's not exactly what we're talking about. We are talking about, you know, Exit, have any exit strategy, but also how, how do you ensure your business? How do you ensure your life to make sure that the people you love are taken care of? And often in business, we forget that part of that is knowing what your exit strategy is and having the right pieces in place. I don't, I don't say that very well. Janice is going to explain that to us today. So anyway, Janice, welcome back. Well, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here always. And, uh, and we're, and we're not going to start out with death, by the way. Okay. No, we're not. We're not. I just had to, I thought that would give a good, like, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. And before we dive in really quickly, I, um, I just want to thank all of our listeners all over the world. If you haven't yet, you can go to UrsulaInc.co and on the homepage, it's very easy to find. I made this so easy because I don't like to go look for things. You can find quantum revenue expansion, the masterclass, which pairs really nicely with the podcast. And it's three parts. Part one, I talk about how to create a brand new quantum revenue container to 2X or 10X your revenue. Then we talk about how to up-level your prices, your packaging, and your marketing, especially if you, you know, if you have a big financial goal, typically that means things have to change in your business. And so we explain how to do that. And then the third part of the course is all about how, how you can collapse time and get mm-hmm. to your goal even faster. And that involves things like teams, systems, quantum mindset all those things. So if you haven't yet, it's free, UrsulaInc.co, not .com. It's on the homepage. So I just wanted to invite you to go there. All right. Let me tell you about Janice Graham. She is an amazing speaker, author, president of Small Business Style Inc. and Entrepreneurs Insurance Services. She is driven to help business owners and entrepreneurs better understand the nuances of long-term succession planning to protect the future of their families, businesses, and employees. And her first book is coming out, Leaving in Style, which we're going to be talking about today as well. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited for Janine that this book is, is going to come out into the world because I understand the process and what it takes to get a book out, especially during a pandemic and all the other things that have been happening. So, so Janice, for our listeners who don't know you, I'd love if you tell your story and just kind of share like, you know, what your, what your trajectory has been, what got you into the world of insurance and, and then what brought you into the world of exit strategies? Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So the, the catalyst for getting me into the world of insurance was really just being an employee many years ago. 
and having a 401k plan because my best friend Tony told me to do it and I didn't know what that meant. Um, and anytime that I would have to sit down with someone and have them look at what I had in place, they would always go, oh, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. And I did not know what that meant. When I had my first daughter, my, my friend came out and she um, gave me or purchased, I purchased a life insurance policy. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what it meant. And so finally, one day being in sales, I decided I don't understand this world of retirement and how it all fits in into our world and our life because people talk in platitudes and big terms and I didn't get it. So I went and I cold called because I was a salesperson. I cold called companies and I ended up getting hired by one of the nation's largest insurance companies. And I learned a lot about retirement and retirement planning. The, the products that we provided were for that space. And then I went on to work for another very large company and I learned a lot more about marketing in this space and working with underwriters and understanding how insurance work in the workplace. Then in 2000, I started my own practice. And when I started, I went with what I knew. I was securities licensed. I did retirement planning. And finally, in 2001, one of my mom's very dear friends uh, who had a very successful business would fly around and fly his own plane. He flew up north here in Northern California, dropped his son off. And as he was coming back, he didn't make it. So it was one of those kind of situations where you know where you are when you get the call. You say, we know where we are when something happened to Michael Jackson. I knew what, where I was when I got that call from my mom and I could hear in her voice that something was wrong. And when she said that he had her friend had crashed his plane, my thought was, oh my goodness, what is going to happen? You know, we're looking at all the fallout. Of course, there was family drama. That's, a, that's another book for another day. There's a lot of family drama. But also, I knew that he had the type of business where his employees were your employees. So it was a private investigation firm. And uh, for example, one of his major clients was a, a, a hospital and drugs are disappearing. It wasn't the doctors or the nurses, but someone else, they were start disappearing. So that person that you hired as a new orderly or whomever to come in was truly one of his employees. So my thought was, what's going to happen to this business? You have all of these employees that have infiltrated these spaces. What's going to happen? And I kept asking questions and asking questions. And my mom would go, I don't know. I don't know. And finally, she came back to me and she said, uh, the board of directors got together. There was nothing in writing. So they had to close, close the business. And I'm thinking, well, how do you close a business where all your employees are in other businesses? And so I started going to some of my mentors and colleagues in my industry and I would say, let me tell you this story. And I would tell them the story and they would say, well, did he have life insurance? I'm like, I don't know. Why would you have life insurance in business? I'll ask. And I asked, no, nope, he didn't have life insurance. Okay. Then I tell someone else, let me tell you this story. And they would say, well, did he have a buy sell agreement? I was like, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know what he's buying or selling. And I would ask, and he did it. And what I realized is that, is that there's a whole place and space where people who are very successful, they may not know what they don't know. And it's like, here's someone who had this, this very viable, scalable, sellable business that just shut down. So it really bothered me. And I kept focusing and looking and learning. And I started to... I'm not going to say lose interest. That's not the right word. But my emphasis went away from retirement planning and really into looking at business planning and helping business owners. So I started doing trainings across the country to learn more about this place and space. And it just really shifted the trajectory of my business and where I wanted to go. And here I am you know, in a place where I feel like I could, I could fill a hole because there are so many people that are successful and knowledgeable in what they know, but I want to help them protect that. And, you know, focusing in on the, the market and investments, um, it wasn't helping to create that foundation of stability. So that's how I got here. Yeah. Interesting that it's interesting how you know, Amanda Johnson, Man just had Amanda Johnson and Aaron Johnson on talking about the power yes. of story. And for you, how this story is obviously someone's life. And I said, we were talking about death, someone's death, 
yes. impacted you and caused you to ask a lot of questions to really yeah. understand. Well, that's one thing I know about you though. Like if you want to figure something out, you will go to the depths of the internet. <laughs> you will go to the deepest depths of the internet and ask everyone, you know, to really find the answer, which makes you so great at what you do. It's one of the reasons your clients are well taken care of and they're well protected and they have the right, you know, insurance or the right exit strategy. So let's talk about that. Like for someone who's kind of maybe I know in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't know about exit strategies. I didn't understand what they were. So what is an, what is an exit strategy? That's a great question. An exit strategy is really just a plan. It's, it is a vision. It is um, planning for the worst and expecting the best. So often in business and in life, we plan for the best and expect the best. Well, when life happens, then we're kind of exposed a little bit. So with an exit plan or exit strategy, it doesn't mean that you are planning for your business to fail. It does not mean that someone is forcing you into retirement. It does not mean that you have to leave anything. What it does mean is that you have a strategy to get to wherever it is that you want to go. So I'll give you a visual. I love visuals. So I liken this part of business to the journey of an airplane. So you get on the runway and it starts building speed and you start, you get it. I love that part. That's the best part. But you start building the speed as the plane is going down the runway. That's you starting the business. Then finally that, that plane takes off and it's rising and it's rising and it's rising. That's you growing your business. Then you hit cruising altitude. You're like in a good place in space and you're, you're up there and it's sunny because it's always sunny up there. And you're cruising at cruising altitude. And at some point you're going, hmm, I think I'm going to need to land this plane. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when and where am I going to, I need to land it. Or maybe you do know, but you know, you need to land the plane. And the reality is, is that we're all going to leave. We're all going to land our planes. So the best thing to do is start building that, that runway today. So that when you get to that destination and you come down, you're not coming in amongst the weeds and potholes and a bumpy road, but you've created a landing strip with lights and lines and someone guiding you in. And now you've landed your plane and let's say that you have more time and you say, that was fun. You get out, you get, grab a drink, go to the restroom, get back in your plane and fly somewhere else or fly into the sunset. Go hang out with your grandkids, travel, whatever it is that you want to do. But by creating that landing strip, you have given yourself options. Mm -hmm. And those options begin today, 15, 20, 30 years out. And you just take those little pebbles and you start going, I'm going to put it over there on that landing strip. That's what an exit plan is. And and the reality, like I say, you never know when you're going to land. You may be planning to land 5,000 miles away, but you might run into a little turbulence. We call that a disability, a stroke, you know, a, a car accident. There may be something that it requires for you to land a little bit sooner. Having a landing strip makes it a little bit easier. It doesn't make it go away. It just makes it a little easier. Oh my gosh. I have so many questions about this. So what, um, how do I ask this? Like, what's the, I guess, what's the downside of not having an exit strategy or what do you wish people really knew? Because you've seen it. You talked about family drama. You've seen up close and personal what can happen when you don't have one. Absolutely. So that is truly the downside. The downside is that you as a a business owner, and it it, it all depends on who you employ and how how often, how much you employ. Um, But as a business owner, you, you can affect the community an entire community. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you're a a coach, a consultant, and you have one or two employees. Um, You affect the lives of those one or two employees. Let's say you're a manufacturer, a distributor, uh, you know, you have uh, 100 employees, you have 50 employees. So you have 50 people who have a rent or mortgage, a car note, they have childcare, they have a dry cleaners, they have grocery. If you just come in and shut the doors tomorrow or someone comes and shuts the door on your behalf because you're not there and there's no plan, you have shifted the lives of 50 employees and spouse and children. So hundreds of people. And now those hundreds of people can no longer afford the child care. So you've affected the child care. So it's truly by not having a plan in place, you can shift what happens in an entire community. Mm. 
Wow. And just the, the effect out like these unintended consequences you don't even know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there's the, the unintended consequences of the employees. There are the unintended consequences of the business. Um, there may be become unintended business partners. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, if you have a partnership and someone's uh, uh, spouse decides they want to come in and that's not exactly, or their children want to come in and, and take over and say, well, my, my mom or dad had 50% partnership in this business. Uh, we're going to run this side of it. There's a lot of things that, that are unintended that can affect uh, your competitors. Uh, they're watching you. They know who you are. And if you can't service your clients, guess who can? And they can do it for free. They'll just take them. Yeah. Wow. So, so a lot, a lot to think about. And you know, yeah. our intention isn't to scare anyone, right? No. Because no. hopefully, you'll never, you know, you'll never, you won't need it in the short term. But at some point, you're at some point, you're going to want to get out of the business. And if you're not, hopefully, you don't pass while you're in the business. So there's still other reasons, like retirement or. Yeah. You're just, you want to sell it or like, there could be so many reasons. Yeah, absolutely. So when should some, someone think about getting an exit strategy? You kind of talked about like the plain um, analogy, but where, where in that analogy do I go? Oh, I definitely need an exit strategy now. I, uh, you, it, you're not going to like, well, you might like, it, I don't know. I am a huge <laughs> fan of Stephen Covey. And when I think of an exit strategy, I begin with the end in mind. Yeah. You begin with, as you're starting your business, uh, you, you're not thinking, oh, I want to get out of it because that's not what it's about. Uh, if you look at some of the tech companies and these, you know, these, uh, these people that are starting apps, they're beginning with the end in mind. They're saying, I want to start and create this app so that I can sell it to whomever. Yeah. Facebook, Google, whatever. So they have begun with an exit strategy. That may be your journey. It may not. Either way, it doesn't make it bad, but you begin with the end in mind. It doesn't mean that, um, for example, or so I was talking to some MBA students a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got feedback from the professor, which was lovely. I, I it was great. It was great feedback. Um, and one of the one of the students said, "I always thought that beginning or having an exit strategy meant that you were planning to fail or you were planning to not do well." And after hearing me and talking with them, they realized that it is a good thing. That's why I see the pinnacle of success is truly having the exit strategy, because it's like they now realize that having that plan and starting, even with the thought process, of it doesn't mean you have to have a retirement date. Entrepreneurs typically don't. Um, but it's just having a vision of what it would look like for you in the future. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing. So begin with the end in mind and begin with the end in mind. So good. So truthful. And also just yeah, yeah and to even have that intention built into your company of where it could yes. go or what you're going to do with it. Absolutely. So then along your journey, you wrote a book, you've been <laughs> thinking about this book and it's taken on different iterations as books do and they grow and they evolve. And, you know, maybe the book today isn't exactly like, like, I think it expanded a lot. It's very different than maybe you even thought what you're going to write. Yes. So tell us like what inspired you to say, I got to get this into a book. I want, you know, I just want people to be able to hold this in their hands. Okay. So do you want me to tell the truth? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, well, what else would I tell you? Right. I don't know. What inspired me to write this book? There was this lady named Ursula Menchez. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, you need to write a book. Where's your book? Have you read a book? And, and it, it was kind of, you know, you, you have this, this thought, like I, I want people need to hear, have this information, and then you have this lovely little voice going, "Are you done? Are you done? You done?" I started this book eight years ago. <laughs> eight years ago, there was this lovely woman, probably That's ten years ago. She probably, it was, sure. Yeah, it's like probably ten years ago. Like you need to do this, and so I started it eight years ago. I wrote the darn book, <laughs> and I finished it in 2018. And went on a cruise. It was like here. And you know, when I when I got back and and I listened to Amanda and she said, I'm a small business owner. I got a lot out of your book, but it was over my head. I tried not to make it technical. I tried, I tried, I tried. Um, but she was like, it's over my head. I got then Amanda, it's wrong. It's mm. wrong. So we scrapped it. The, I, 
the, the only thing that the first book has in common with the second book is the title. Everything about it is different. So I did a start it and I did a total rewrite. And this time I took the book and I created a character because I love the, and I know that, that I learned through stories. It resonates, it anchors in a lot better. And because this is a it, what we call an advanced topic, I created a story and a storyline to help this character get the points across that I want business owners to learn and to know that if it's really just a book designed to get you started mm. um, and, and it's to introduce the topic, to make it palatable, to make it enjoyable so that you will continue the journey. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I legit didn't think I, I mean, I might've been the nagging, the <laughs> nagging friend who thinks that, yes, of course you should have a book. Of course you should put your expertise out in the world. Of course. Like, cause I think so many people think they shouldn't write a book or they're, I don't know. Cause I, in my, in the belief zone, I wrote for a long time. I didn't even think, I didn't think I was a writer <laughs> until Amanda, our good friend, Amanda Johnson that's yeah. what we're talking about, was like, um, Ursula, like, let's check that belief for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I was a business owner who wrote things that someone helped me put in a book. It was very interesting. So we disqualify ourselves. That's my point. And so yes. I'm glad you shared the story. So you can actually say you've written two books, Janice. You've written two books. Exactly. They just I don't think I could have done that. I mean, <sighs> I got to give you like so much, so many props for saying, then this isn't the right book. I'm going to write another one. There's not many people that would be willing to do that. So huge, yeah. like huge, just high fives to you for being, being willing, because I think I, that. That would have been overwhelming. So then you went back and rewrote the whole thing. A whole so that's technically thing. two books. And it I, I'm so glad you're sharing this, Janice, because on the show, like we we do tell the truth. We talk about it's not easy. It's right. not easy to write a book. No. It's not easy to edit a book and go back and read the stuff you wrote. It's yeah. not easy to get the book out into the world. It's not easy to market. I'm in the process of marketing, like launching the next book. <laughs> I had a little bit, I've had a few interesting moments this week. <laughs> I'm, I, what I found, Janice, and this is maybe useful for our listeners as well. I was making something really hard that didn't need to be hard. When ah. I came, and I was totally getting my own. I'm like, why am I? Anyway, so my point is, thank you for sharing that. I'm glad that I'm grateful that you're willing to be that transparent because I know there are listeners who have books in them or businesses in them or anything, and yeah. they felt like giving up on it. So Ooh. No, you don't give up. I mean, it, it, it is hard. But when you really realize and recognize that it is something that can help someone. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I've been in my industry 26 years. I've been in business going into my 22nd year. And, you know, even when I look at you, Urs Ursula. <laughs> um, you call me Ursula on the show. I know, because you're my <laughs> You're my twins. So I can call you twin. Um, but, you know, I look at, we've had conversations about your passions. Like, how do you keep going? You, you always say, I believe I can help people. I really believe I can help people. And I, in my industry and in my space, I believe that I can help people, but I, it gets caught up in a product. And it's like, it's so not about a product. It's about helping people. And the first time in almost 22 years, I'm in a space with this book and this, in this journey that I really feel like I'm supposed to be. I am really in a path of, I just want to shout it to the world. I am shouting it to the world actually, because I've been talking to women all over the world. Um, but it's, this is the, this is my, my place and space to help. And, and it is coming from the core of who I am, because if I can just plug this one little hole Everyone else, you can, you can do whatever you need with whomever you need. I just want to help you understand and understand that foundation. That's oh. it. Oh, I love that. You definitely have helped me. I mean, without you, I would not have, probably I wouldn't have like even life insurance or as much insurance as I have. Now it's like a proud thing for me. Now I'm like, how much life insurance do I have? Right now I like to have that <laughs> conversation instead. And, and you had to really educate me. That's a whole other show. But, like that's one of the things that you're so gifted at. So I think your book is going to be amazing because you're good at like, what, I agree with Amanda, insurance can be super technical. So you wrote the technical book and she's like, oh, it's like fascinating, but wow, how do I apply it to yeah. business? So then you rewrote, uh, rewrote the book. So, so tell us about 
because one of the things you and I talked chatted about was the cover. I was like, it's really feminine. So, you know, <laughs> I was like, I, cause there was a former cover, which had you on it. And I, right. I'm, that was my preference, but I also love that the new cover is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So tell me your intention in that. And I also, within that, like who is sitting out there right now, listening to us who needs to read this book? Who is she? Oh, thank you. Yes, it is. You know, Ursula knows me and she's like, eh, it's a little feminine. Here's the thing. The, the, this entire journey has been truly a journey within myself as well. So there's a secret, Ursula knows, that it's not going to be a secret much longer, but uh, for many years, I'm in a, in a financial space and a lot of people did not know that I have a fashion degree. And so it's there. I never put it on my bios before. I was like, what difference does it make? I have this degree. Big deal. Uh, then um, as I've been also on this journey with the book, I have a business degree. And the, the title came really, it was divine. It was just a divine download. It was leaving in style. And I said, you know what? This is really a play on my life and my world, um, a world of, of business. And actually my fashion degree is on the business side of the fashion industry. Um, and it was um, a, a culmination of, of me being whole. And so when I, when the title came to me, then the vision of illustrations was, I need a fashion illustrator. So my, my, my uh, illustration was created and designed by an actual fashion illustrator, not a, you know, someone that I guess that would normally do books. So she comes out, she looks a little bit more, um, she's definitely more feminine. Uh, and she has jewelry now, by the way, yours. But, um, you know, it's like I, I wanted a, a book that was an outlier. I'm an outlier. Mm. And I wanted a book that that is in the business section and that looks like it might not belong. Like this might. What is this about? <laughs> you know, it, it you know, one of these things is not like the other. Um, and so I wanted a book that was attractive and that would be attractive to someone and take uh, take that that journey of I'm, I'm willing to read this because it sounds different than any other business book I've ever read on this topic or I've never read on this topic because it's just daunting. Yeah. So uh, and, and my character, uh, Grace, her name is I love that name, Grace. Um, I wanted her to be every woman. So, you know, once you see the cover, you will see she could be, she could be anyone. She could be Middle Eastern. She could be Hispanic. She could be black. She could be a white person with a tan. She can be Puerto Rican. She could be anyone. I want the readers to see themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, the message in the book is for anyone. Um, I wasn't, my intention is not to say that you cannot pick up this book if you're a man. Um, but what it is, is that I wanted a book that was going to resonate with women because in my space, every book that I've read on the top of, topic of exit planning, whenever there's a case study, 100% of them are on men in business. And last thing I checked, there were women in business. So sometimes it's just nice to see ourselves in, 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 uh, in a book. So, uh, she, yeah, she's not your typical hard line illustration. She is yeah. truly from a fashion illustrator. Yeah. Well, I would guess you have a fashion degree because you always look amazing or you just great. <laughs> so I was looking at what you're wearing. I'm like, oh, it looks so good. It looks so good as you Thank well. you. Thank so, you. Thank you. The so tell me a little bit more about her. I know we're starting, we're getting close to the end, but like, what is she? who's she who needs your book? What is she thinking about right now? What is she maybe a little worried about? What's keeping her up at night that, uh, this, that your book would really help her with? That's, you know, what's keeping her up at night is I have a lot of people who count on me. What if something happens to me? That's what's keeping her up at night. Or yeah. um, hmm, I'm going into the office and what if something happens to my business partner? Um, I'm not really a fan of being of their spouse. I'm not a fan of being in business with their kids. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm really growing this business. You know, what kind of obligations do I have? Um, what type of legal things should I be considering? Who should be a part of my team? What kind of experts? Uh, I don't even know where to find the experts. Who should yeah. I be looking to help me on this journey? Hmm. I don't even know where to begin. I, I, I have, I've never heard of exit planning. Those are the people that will really benefit. 
Um, if you are an individual that has a hundred million dollar business and you have are surrounded by a family office and mergers and acquisition people, you might enjoy it. You actually will get some, some things out of it, but you'll have a lot of people in place that are taking care of those things for you. The average business owner does not. And I don't know if you know this or so, but over 99% of the businesses in the U S are small businesses. Wow. And that is mind boggling. Yeah. We are the employers of the country. So when you feel that sense of responsibility and you don't know where to turn or where to look or someone says you should have a plan, you're like, what the heck? A plan is a four letter word. You know, this is this will be a great entree into understanding what the journey um, can look like and who should be there to serve you. Okay, Beautiful. All right. So April 7th is a big day. It's it both your birthday and the launch of your first book, which is so awesome. So for those of us who want to buy a book or 20, or we want to gift your book to someone, um, I can't wait to get my copies. Where do we go to get them? And what day? So are, are we to buy them on April 7th? Is that the plan right now? Yes. Yes. We, we are doing a grand launch on April 7th. Um, you will have access to them um, on at leavinginstyle.com um, as well. They should be on Amazon as well. Uh, but you're also invited to my, my book launch. Everyone's invited. Tell us more. It's going to be, it's going to be in person and virtual. I have a wonderful space that has a smart room so that it's going to be inclusive. And I, that will all be um, on my, uh, my LinkedIn. We're going to have the invitation up and have an event right that's open, but everyone's welcome to come. They'll hear a little bit of my story, a little bit more of the story, the why, um, why we are here. And uh, yes, you're all welcome. So exciting. Well, congratulations, Denise. And for our listeners, go to leavinginstyle.com and, or hang out with, um, and so go there and. Um, hang out with Janice Graham on LinkedIn, find you there so you can get connected because I know you do a lot there as well. Absolutely. And mark your candle calendars for April 7th because there, there will be a, an event celebration. You'll be celebrating this great launch and it'll be happening throughout the day. So that's when you want to get your books. Absolutely. That's oh, it. Janice, congratulations um, on leaving in style and all the things awesome as always to have you back we could chat for hours and i'm sure our listeners got so much information about really thinking about what their exit strategy might be and what what they what next steps they could take so i want to give you final world final word anything that we missed or that we didn't say that that you wanted to share with our listeners you know i i just want you to know that life happens and the best thing that we can do is plan for what we can. And, you know, it is no different than planning for buying a home, buying a car, sending kids to school. Uh, This is just a strategy. And if you just remember that life happens and it it may go the way we want, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, But the reality is, is that we are all going to leave our businesses. We're all going to leave at some point. And there are certain things that we have control over and certain things we don't you know, taking an opportunity to, to, to look at leaving in style. It's called leaving in style business succession on your terms. So we can do our very best to make these your strategy on your terms. Beautiful. Denise Graham, thanks again for being here. We wish you incredible success with your, your new book Yay. and an amazing year. Thank you, Ursula. It is always a pleasure. <laughs> so much fun. And to our listeners all over the world, we love you. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you have a guest that you would recommend or a topic you'd like me to talk about, you can email us at contact at ursulainc.co. That's it for now, you guys. Take care. Be well. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. And if you are ready to make your next quantum leap, let's do it. Ursula invites you to join us at the 2X Intensive. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. Don't forget to leave us a review on your favorite podcast app.